Today we're going to have a hearing uh, in the Committee of Human Relations on what we consider uh, people that are here, all of them, uh, ministers, families, children, what we consider a very important issue uh, that needs to get attention focused on. Uh, there are a lot of issues right now uh, that are being debated in the federal government, which are important issues. We're not saying they're not. But this issue involves American citizens, undocumented citizens who are family members of these American citizens, and we can't just let it go by the wayside. And it's important that we refocus, especially here in Chicago, where I believe that Chicago had been a city that had been a model for the rest of the country in recognizing the very serious issue of the need for immigration reform in this country. Not only in the city, but in this county and in this state. Especially again considering uh, that the President of the United States is a fellow Chicago, a fellow elected official from this great state. And the biggest advocate that we have in this country on this issue, Congressman Luis Gutierrez, is also from Chicago. Senator Durbin, a big advocate for the DREAM Act, is also from Chicago in the state of Illinois. Today, the City Council will hold hearings on a resolution calling President Obama to suspend the deportations that separate families and offer deferments he offered to the Dreamers. We asked that he would offer that to their parents and the parents of U.S. citizen children. Um, we believe that our families have been torn apart and we believe they have been used in a uh, partisan way as pawns uh, between this partisan fight among two parties. Uh, Latino pastors are calling both parties out uh, because we feel neither party has clean hands. And we as Christians, we are asking that Christians and the Republican Party in particular stand up for what is right uh, stand up for faith, stand up for family, and stand up for yet the next generation. Yet we repeat that neither party uh, has clean hands. And so we are thankful to our city councilmen here who will be holding a hearing uh, today on a resolution. Again, calling President Obama to suspend deportations that separate families and to offer uh, the parents of the dreamers uh, the same opportunities that they have been offered uh, in terms of deferred actions. Mi nombre es Doris Aguirre. Uh, quizás mi historia parecerá monótona o repetitiva para algunos medios, uh, quizás repetitiva para algunas organizaciones o para personas que ya saben mi historia, pero si yo no defiendo mi caso, no va a haber persona alguna que lo haga por mí. Así es que por eso estoy aquí desde hace 11 años luchando por mi caso. I've been here for 11 years struggling in my case. If I don't come personally to tell you my story, I can't expect anyone to tell you my story. So that's why I'm here today. Mis compañeros y yo tenemos algo en común. My friends and I have something in common. Somos inmigrantes. We're immigrants. Cruzamos el río. We cross the border. Cruzamos montes. We've had to cross over the mountains. Excepto de que yo tengo algo muy diferente. But I have something different. Yo crucé con un niño de cinco meses. I had to cross the border with my son of five months old. Este es mi hijo. This is my son. Es la edad de la que tenía cuando yo crucé con él. This is the age he had when I had to cross three borders with him. Hace 11 años me decidí a luchar por mi caso y aquí estoy todavía. Eleven years ago I decided to fight my deportation and I'm still here today. Estoy esperando por los flamantes, republicanos y demócratas. And I'm, and I'm waiting for both parties, the, the Republican Party as well as the Democratic Party. Para que al final una resolución a favor de nosotros porque creo que lo merecemos. And to finalize, finally come up with a bill or a law that would 
be in favor of us staying together. Uh, soy una persona decente, soy una persona honesta. I'm an honest and decent mother. Tengo 14 o 13, 14 años de estar acomodada a la situación de mi esposo, a su salario de mi esposo, para no tener que robarle un seguro a nadie para ir a trabajar. I live uh, with, uh, my husband supports us, I have never gone out to work, I'm a uh, stay-at-home mom. No le debo ningún centavo al gobierno porque no le pido ayuda de ninguna clase. I have not taken one cent from the government because me I... Me he acomodado a esta situación y lo seguiré haciendo porque soy una persona decente, porque soy una mujer que me merezco respeto. And I am a woman who deserves respect. Este es mi hijo en la actualidad. This is the age of my son now. Es un excelente niño. He's an excellent child. Que está esperando por un futuro mejor para él y para nosotros en familia. He like her is under deportation and he's looking for a better future for him and his mother. Yo creo que el concilio en este día debe de hacer una resolución a favor de nosotros los más necesitados. That she asked the aldermen to pass the resolution in favor of them, the people that need are in so much need. Yo creo que el concilio debe de dar una resolución porque nosotros como inmigrantes estamos aportando a este país, estamos aportando a esta comunidad y yo creo que deben de ser serios y no jugar con los sentimientos de nosotros. And we are people that have contributed to the economy, to the communities, to this country and it is not fair that we're being used as political people. Ningún político llega a sentarse en ninguna silla política o de gobierno o de lo que sea sin el voto de nosotros. Not one politician can make it to their seat unless they have our vote. Así que yo creo que el tiempo es ahora. And time is now. My name is Daniel, and well, I'm a dreamer. And I think it's not fair for those who don't have the permit to work and for our fathers who came here for a better life. And what we see is things getting worse and worse because our parents are being deported. I see everything really impossible for us to keep on going with our lives because we see our parents being separated from our families. Our little brother's suffering. Everybody's suffering. My parent, my dad was pulled on by immigration and I feel like everything was torn apart for a whole week because my dad was separated away from me. And I want my family to be together united and to work on together the new chairman of human relations, I, I couldn't be more proud than to, at my first hearing uh, to speak on this uh, wonderful resolution. And, and as we listen to testimonies today, I, I reach out to our President Obama, who decided to say that he's not going to take on this, this uh, issue at the moment, but he wants us to reach out to our congressional leaders. Well, the fact is that we have a closed government. We're not operating today. Uh, but I would think that we should have had a closed government without an immigration reform bill that's been presented for years now. So I think you should think about that. And, uh, and uh, but today we're gonna, we have an opportunity to listen to the testimony and see where we're headed. You know, it seems to me that this is the third press conference that I have been part of in the last nine months this year about the same, with the same purpose, asking President Obama to impose a moratorium on the deportations. Three times in nine months. And still, it's not acting. All I have to say today is that since the federal government is shut down, I think that he has a little bit of time in his hand. And so therefore, Mr. President, get a pen, pull the drawer, and sign that executive order imposing a moratorium on the deportations. Yeah. That's what we have to do. You know, it's, it's very coincidental that the federal courts are closed or shut down, except the courts for deportation. That's right. That should be illustrative to us. And that should show the interest that I think this president has shown on this issue. I cannot be kind.
kind, how can I be kind with my words towards him about this issue? Because I think that he has disrespected us for almost eight years and his kid playing us, lip serving us, and doing nothing. I think that we should take a strong stand and I think that we should go after both Democrats and Republicans until such time comes that we can get immigration reform. It's important to put a face, a name, a gender, and age to this issue. And that's why it was so important to have Guadalupe and her parents, Doris and Anna, come up here and speak. And then multiply those three individuals that were here by thousands, thousands, and thousands of people a week. Tens of thousands of people a, a year. These are the people that are being affected. We are in Florida. I can understand my, my colleague, my friend Alvin Maldonado's anger toward the president. I'm trying to be a little bit more restrained and say, look, look at these people that we're talking about. These are lives. These are really American lives and undocumented lives of families that are being affected by this. Some of the cynics a few months back before the election said that President Obama signed the Dreamers Law for political reasons to gain an advantage in an election. That may be partly true, but President Obama, you've got to now look at the human lives that this lack of action is causing. Please, please, put a moratorium to, to, to deportation. Today, I think we're in the third day of a, of, of a government shutdown, and that seems to be at the top of the news right now. And uh, just before that, we were talking about Syria. And, uh, and then in the future, we're going to be talking about, uh, in mid-October, maybe the death that we, owe, that we owe. And if there is some reason why we have to hold off on passing this reform legislation until maybe sometime in the future, then okay, let's, let's say that is going to happen. But the President does have the authority, as he showed when he passed the Dream Act, by a signature of his pen, he has the authority to stop the deportation right now by the same stroke of that pen. And that's the reason for this resolution. You know? We want him to again make the good humanistic decision that he made on behalf of Dreamers just before the election to make it uh, on the deportations that are not necessary on deportations that are more than any other presidential administration in the history of the United States. And if we can be talking about the rhetoric, we can be talking about the numbers, but if you don't see on a day-to-day -day basis how this is affecting real people, men, women, children, parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, how they are being affected, how they are being negatively affected, and in some cases hurt and almost destroyed in terms of what that family structure is, then you're not going to be paying attention. There's no election. This is his last election. He doesn't have to worry about having to run again. Do this for the humanistic reason that he cares about people, he cares about families, he cares about children, he cares about the future of this United States. Es Abraham Martínez. Abraham Martínez. Mi padre de cuatro niñas, este, las cuatro sociedadanas. Este, mi esposa the, también. My name is Abraham Martínez and I'm the father of four young, uh, four children, all girls. También mi esposa es ciudadana. My wife and children are all U.S. citizens. No quiero que me deporten porque ellos tienen derecho a estar aquí, ellos nacieron aquí. I hope they don't deport me. They have a right to be here. Y, este, y si me deportan a mí, estarían separando a la familia. Y If they deport me, it separates the family. Y yo pienso que la familia debe estar junta siempre. And the family, I believe, should always be united. Eh, espero que, que aprendan una reforma migratoria para todas las personas. 
I hope that there is a, a reform of immigration for all. Este, y permitan permanecer las familias juntas y unidas por siempre. So that we can, our families can stay together. Hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Diego Lino. Good afternoon. And, my name is Diego Lino. Antes que nada, quiero darle gracias a cada uno de ustedes. First of all, I would like to thank each and every one of you. Por el soporte que nos están dando. That you are the attention that you're giving us. A la televisión. The television, I thank them. Yo soy ciudadano americano. I'm a U.S. citizen. Mi esposa está en proceso de deportación. And my wife is being deported. Tenemos nueve años con el problema. We've been suffering this problem for nine years. Tengo tres hijas ciudadanas con ella. I have three U.S. citizen children with her. Y es, es un, un dolor muy grande porque mis hijas estaban pequeñas cuando ellos trataron de deportar a mi esposa. It was a very traumatic because when they uh, tried to deport my wife, my children were just babies. Mis, tengo unas gemelas, son prematuras. My Na twins were premature. Nacieron de seis meses y medio. They were born at six and a half months. Estaban en el hospital cuando ella fue arrestada. They were in the hospital when my wife was was arrested. Y ellos no les importó dejarla sal, no la quisieron dejar salir. And she was unable to breastfeed them or be with them. Estuvo un mes en la cárcel. She was one month incarcerated. Y me dijeron que ellos podían pagar los tickets de mis hijas para que regresaran a México junto con su mamá. And they said that if if that the children, even though they were U.S. citizens should be deported with the mother. Yo creo que es tiempo de que haga algo el presidente. I Porque believe es it's time muy grande. for the president to do something. Nadie sabe el, el dolor que causa el ser separado de su familia. Hasta que no viene uno I don't en carne propia. I don't think anyone really knows what it's like to be torn from your family unless you you have witnessed it in your own body. Thinking about all the pain that we went through and all suffering, it really makes me feel bad about like them bringing me here. But I thank God and thank Obama that now I'm a dreamer. The point of that is for uh, for me to get a better life, to get a good education, and to pursue my dream of becoming someone in life, to be successful. I'm really sad and disappointed that my parents get deported. They have no, any law to get documents to stay with me in this country. They don't have anything to protect themselves. When we go to those stores to buy food with my, with my whole family, with my brother, we fear, I fear, that the police stop my dad and they deport them because they don't have the legal status. I fear that they separate me from my family. I fear for all my friends that they say the same thing. I am born in the United States when the parents are not legal. They have the same fear as I do. My name is Yesenia Guerrero. Um, I'm 19 years old and I'm also a dreamer. I was brought here when I was three years old, so I've been living in this country for 16 years. And all I have to say is that those 16 years I've been living in fear. Same as Ricardo and Ana and most dreamers out there. We are scared that just because my parent has to go to work, he could get stopped and not come home that day. I'm thankful that I had the distraction. I thank God for that. But for me, it's not good enough because, like I said, what if one day my dad doesn't show up? What if one day when I come home with my siblings, they're not home, then who's in charge? As I got the diffraction, as I got my license and my social security, all I'm asking is for my family to have it. Not only my parents, but my family members. Because not only my parents are here illegal. Hi, my name is Anna, and well, I'm also a dreamer, and I am 16 years old. I came here to say my story. It's hard to tell because my dad was held on by immigration also. It was not fair because we were suffering for a week. We all went through a hard time. I couldn't concentrate in school, neither could my brothers, and my mom couldn't concentrate at work because of my dad's situation. All we ask is the deportations to be stopped. I'm so tired of him playing with our lives. Because it's really lives that he's playing with. I saw lágrimas 
these tears that I shed. Son de millones de madres y padres. They're tears of millions of mothers and fathers. Y niños. And children. Que no han sido separados o que están en, en proceso de deportación. Who are separated or will be separated because of this deportation. Esta pesadilla la tenemos que acabar. We have to end the nightmare. Con su ayuda de ustedes. With your help. Pongan su corazón. And with, put your heart in it. Que ustedes... ¿Qué ustedes pueden hacer si ustedes les dicen que no pueden ver a sus hijos? What would you do in order to see your children? ¿Qué harían ustedes? What would you do? Si ustedes tienen que pelear para poder ver a tu familia. If you had to fight to just see your family. Un día decidí salir de mi país, Honduras. One day I left my, my country of Honduras. Y mis compañeros y yo tenemos algo en común, siempre digo eso. And me and my friends here have something in common. Lo único que conmigo venía un pequeño detalle. Just the details are different. Yo crucé tres países con un bebé. I crossed three borders with this baby. Con este bebé de cinco meses. He was only five months old. Crucé tres países. I crossed three countries. Crucé montes. I crossed the mountains. Crucé ríos. I crossed rivers. Aguante hambre. I, would, I had to uh, with, withstand hunger. Pero yo estoy agradecida con Dios. But I am so grateful to God. Nunca he robado un seguro para ir a I trabajar. I have never been on any program from this country. I, I, haven't, I haven't used the social security number. I have Nunca. Never. Nunca. I've never taken any services. No tengo ningún otro delito más que haber cruzado ilegal. And I have made, done no other crime but have crossed those borders. Today the courts are closed. All the courts are closed except for one. So if you're a criminal or you're being uh, accused of a criminal act, whether that be uh, rape or a murder, the courts are closed. No one will hear that case today. But, if, but the people that are being deported, that court is open. For me, that means that they're sending us a message because like you say, um, Alderman Reboyes, this is not just a Latino issue, but of the two million people that will have been deported, the absolute majority are Latino. So I look at this as a Latino crisis in America. When Barack Obama was running for election his first time, he promised us Latinos. He said, si se puede, yes we can. In 90 days, I'll resolve this issue. He did not. Since then, his administration, by the end of this month, will have deported almost two million Latinos. I feel like I'm in a domestic violence relationship with my president. He keeps beating us up, but he keeps telling us, I love you. Don't change the locks. And then I feel like the Democratic Party is my mother-in-law, saying, we're gonna do this for you. It's the Republicans' fault. But they're deporting us every day. It's a hypocrisy. If you wanna stop the deportations, you stop them. You use your power, you pick up your pen. You tell Latinos in good faith that I'm gonna stop these deportations like he did when he needed the Latino vote and he gave uh, discretion to Ana and the Dreamers. I've lost faith in my president, but to get it back, he needs to do an act of good faith. And uh, I'm not a Republican. I used to be a Democrat. I'm not a Democrat anymore. Soy Cristiana, and I am Latina. And I'm angry because of the two million people that have been and will be deported by the end of this month. It's a crisis and I ask and call on all my Latino aldermen, all the people with good conscience to support this resolution to send it to Barack Obama and tell him that it's enough. Ya basta. Uh, the suffering of our children, you've heard from the little children, you've heard from the dreamers, you've heard from the parents. They have done no other crime but be in this country and work hard. And it's about time we recognize them for what they do. Uh, my wife is from Bulgaria, though a lot of people would suspect that she's Hispanic. Uh, we, uh, yeah, exactly, always. <laughs> So we come to you, we've been married 10 years, we've been struggling with immigration for five years, we've had 
four private bills introduced on behalf of our family and nothing's been done. We are asking for communication. All the aldermen, all the congressmen, Republican or Democratic, it makes no difference. The reason we are in the situation we are in now is because of lack of communication. All come together and find a simple, comprehensive approach to immigration reform. And I ask you, why is that? Is it because you haven't heard enough sad stories? Because for the last five years, that's all I've heard is sad stories. And I have one myself. I'm not going to bore you with it because you've heard a million. What I will ask you for is for communication. Please, when this comes back, when session comes back, please, let's make immigration a priority. And as I hear the stories that are going on here, uh, it takes me back to uh, a ship that came on our shores about 200 years ago. And it's a good thing immigration department in Washington because they would have been turned around and sent back to the political and religious discriminating country that they fled from. There was a deep need in that nation for some type of reform. There's one here now. There's one here in this room right now and we could go on detail after detail explaining and, and trying to convince everyone of the need. But I think deep in our hearts, there's a spot that says, you know, that's true. This is really needed. And that's the little spot that I want to appeal to you today. If we look back, we'll see the pillars of all this was on the shoulders of immigrants. And these immigrants are speaking today. There's still a future that can be even better for this nation if we do not abandon those laws and principles that made America what it is now. We tended to formulate this issue as an issue about immigrants that want to come here for the American dream. But we know that that's not exactly the reality. When NAFTA was passed, five million workers, agricultural workers, were put out of work in Mexico. The same thing happened in Haiti uh, when international policy, economic policy changed in Honduras and other places. There was an economically forced migration from 95 to 2005 that brought the 11 million here. They didn't come here for the American dream. They came here for what the American nightmare did to their country. And when they got here, they were hired. Bosses would have a worker and say, bring your family here. We'll hire them too. We want them. Not just that they were cheap labor, but they were unprotected labor. They had no rights. They couldn't go to court. They couldn't go to OSHA. The highest, the, the greatest uh, amount of workplace injury is in the Latino community. Why? Because of the great pre predomination of undocumented workers who have no rights to be able to say, this is an unsafe condition. So they were hired. They were used. The whole country benefited from their labor. Here's what we're saying. Because the whole nation Social Security fund that took their money, the workers, the companies, the people whose kids were taken care of, the food that we ate that was cooked by them. Since the whole nation participated in that system for the last 20 years, then the nation should take shared responsibility for the families that were born here and the born here and the children that were born. That's and this is not a privilege that we're offering. We're just saying take responsibility for what we as a nation did and give them, those children, the opportunity to have the same equality as other children.